Hey guys, Joshua Jack here with Matrix. Uh, coming to you live from my home office. Um, I think we're in week two, three, or 15 of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. And um, I thought I would spend a few minutes today talking about some don'ts and some do's of working with and leading remote teams and remote team members. Um, I'm very fortunate to have a bunch of different personalities that I work with. Uh, some are in shock due to work from home, all of my extroverts out there, and some of my introverts are uh, in the best place I've ever been. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what it takes and give you guys some pointers on working with these kind of team members and working with remote teams. Um, for some of you guys, it's gonna be very difficult, right? You're used to having that direct oversight. You're used to standing over people's shoulder. You're used to having either that or interaction with them on a day-to-day -day basis, face-to-face. -face. And um, it's gonna be different for you because there's gonna be an increased level of trust that's needed. Uh, and there's gonna be an increased amount of transparency in order for everyone to get everything done that they need to get done. So rolling into that, here are my top three don'ts and do's for uh, remote leadership. Okay, don't. Don't have IT install a remote monitoring app on your team members' computers. Um, joking, obviously, but I do know quite a few folks that are talking about how do I check in on the team members. And what I say to that is the first do. Set up some recurring times, uh, at least weekly with your team members. Some of your team members are gonna need more time. They're gonna need more face-to-face -face with you. Use your tools that you have, uh, Zooms, Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, whatever it is, to set up those 15 minute, at least face-to-face -face times with your teams. Yes, it's gonna take more of your time, but that's what you're here for. Uh, the other thing I would mention on that one is set up some collaboration times where you pull an entire team together. So if you're leading two to three teams, make sure that you get them together and get them assembling and help lead that the first couple times so that they understand what it looks like. Be that, be that experienced person and be the one that sets the standard for what collaboration needs to look like. So make sure you do that weekly at least. Okay, the second don't. Don't enforce strict working hours. Most of us are not working in factories. So I would say, you know, don't go in and say, hey guys, we're working eight to fives. Um, but I would say from a due perspective, set some core working hours. Um, set those core working hours 10 to three. Guys, I need you on during this time so we can be collaborative. Explain the reason why. Explain the need for face-to-face -face or video communication and being available. Um, we all know, um, I have three wonderful kiddos at home. Um, we all know that we're sharing internet bandwidth with our kids. They're doing you know, Google Classroom, uh, they're doing Instagram or TikTok or whatever they're doing right now. And so um, it's, it's necessary for us to set those, those core working hours so that our team members have that flexibility to be able to, to work collaboratively even at their home. And then the last one I would mention <clears throat> from a don't perspective is please don't use emails to correct, to pivot, to provide feedback back, um, especially when you're copying teams or the entire company. Um, do please set those expectations early that we're in learning mode. Um, we're all learning how to do this work better. We're all learning how to be remote. We're all learning how to, in some cases, our team members are learning how to be self-motivated and self-organized and self-managed. So we're relying on them and setting that expectation early is powerful. And then use the, your personal time, your one-on-one -on -one time that you have to provide that feedback. And you know, some of us haven't built the trust we need with our team members. So it's a great time as well to say, hey, here's some of the feedback that I have for you. Um, what can I do for you? What do I need to be doing differently? And that helps establish that trust. So there's lots of tools out there that we can use, guys, uh, to make this time work better. I encourage you uh, to really try to be effective with your team leadership and really focus on trust, transparency, and that high efficiency, high effective team that we know we have. So 
Hope that helped anyone out there. Have a great day.